ओम ज्ञान तिरांद से ज्ञानाजन शलाखया चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्री गुरव नम ओम ज्ञान तिरांद से ज्ञानाजन शलाखया चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददा स्वापदा बुद्धेह श्री गुरो श्रीयुतापद कमल श्री गुरोन्वैष्णवांश श्री रूप साग्रजात सागर रघुनाथात्मका सजीव साइत सावदूत परजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादा सागण श्री ललिता विशाखाता नमा ओं विष्णुपादा कृष्ण प्रेष्टा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी ने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशिणे कूजत राम रामेति मधुर मधुराक्षर आरुह्य कविता शाखा वंदे वाकिल यमचरितामृत सागर अतृप्त मुनि वंदे प्राचेत समकलश मनोजव मारुतुल्य वेगम जितेन्द्रिय बुद्धिमता परिष्ठ वातात्मज वानरयूत मुख्यम श्रीरामदूत शिसा नम बुद्धिर्बल यशो धैर्य निर्भय अरोगता अजाट्यम वाक्पटु चूम स्मरणात्मे वेद वेदे परे पुंसी जाते दशरथात्मे वेज वेद प्राचेत सादासी साक्षात्मना वैदे सहित सुरद्रुमतले हईमे महामंडले मध्ये पुष्पकमासने मणिमये वीरासने सुस्थित अग्रे वाचयति प्रभाजन सुते तत्व मुनिभ्य परम व्याख्या परता परिवृत रामं भजे श्यामल नमोस्तु राय सलक्ष्मणा देव्य शतस्य जनकात्मजाय नमोस्तु रुद्रेन्द्रिय मिलेभ्यो नमोस्तु चंद्रार्कमुद्गणेभ्य सीतापते श्रीराम राम 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 भजे श्याम राम भजे श्याम भजे श्याम हरे कृष्ण ओके can we have a look at where we left in the prior uh, chapter and from there move on to what we are going to be doing for today who do we have on the audience hari krishna yes our folks from the prior segment anybody Hare Krishna. Okay. So, in the beginning of the prior chapter, we saw, after having given a long uh, talk, Rama becomes silent, and then there is, you know, Bharata is basically glorifying Rama and says. uh who has the qualities like you who has equipoise uh who is accepted by all the greats and despite having been accepted by all the greats still you take their uh advice uh and then uh who who promotes sattva guna is literally like the devatas that that's the situation that he is in and the knower of you are you know he he is praising rama to be the knower of creation and destruction all of these are multiple hints that are coming in and again and again 
one important point I want to impress uh, on everybody at this point in time. Madhye Pushpakama Sane Manimaye Vira Sane Sustitam Agre Vachaiti Prabanjana Sute Tatum Munibya Param Vyakyantam Bharata Dibih Paripratam Ramam Bajesha Madam. So the Vyakyantam Bharata Dibihi means Rama is discussing with Munibya Tatum Munibya Param Vyakyantaha that with the Munis that are there, he is discussing Vyakyanta. But Munibya Param Vyakyantam Bharataha. If you are going to include the word Bharata, because if you see this whole segment is actually the two of them are having an intellectual duel. Rama and, and Bharata are having a very, very interesting intellectual duel and both of them, they are such a match for each other. Yes. Um, so it's, it's a very, very interesting discussion. Each one is coming up with one logic and the other one uh, defeating that or saying more. Then Bharata goes on and says, listen, Rama, let me tell you the truth. Uh, it's mom, not me. It's 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 Kaikeyi who's, who made it all this. And he says, unfortunately, because I'm a pursuer of Dharma, I'm not in a position to actually kill her. Uh, otherwise, you know, frankly, I wouldn't have hesitated to do that. Uh, but then he goes on to, after saying this is mom's problem, he goes on to say, this is pop's problem. So what's dad's problem? What is Dasharatha's problem? He said, listen, I should not be criticizing somebody who's passed on, who's such a great person. Um, but uh, I, it is unfortunate to say that he has done something very wrong. Um, I should be criticizing because he is a very respected uh, person, our guru, our father, etc. But wrong is the wrong. And it's, it, the scriptures say that when one becomes old, uh, many times one becomes confused. So in, in that situation, he's saying he seems to have, the fact that he banished you was a very inappropriate thing to do being uh, in, in the uh, uh, being attached to a woman and therefore giving this boom that this is a very uh, uh, negative thing to happen. So he says the son, uh, the scriptures say that when a father does something wrong, uh, the son should reverse the ills that he has done. And by doing that, basically he uh, he's called the apatya. And as an apatya, he saves the father from the grave illness that has been done. So such a son is considered great. And that's where we saw the example of Vena and Prithu come and, and all of that. Uh, so then he says, forget it, save me, save my mother from this sinful situation, save the father from the sinful situation, come pick up the kingdom and rule it. This is one argument that he is giving on, on this side. Save, uh, uh, right the wrong. Now we move on to the section that we're going to see for today. And uh, today we will be dealing with, uh, we will complete this chapter and then we will move on to the next segment, a little into the next chapter. And with that, we are almost completing till chapter 110. Because 108, I think Jabali's discussion with Rama, we've already covered those two chapters. We retraced uh, to come back. So today I, I go back into this, uh, this chapter. We finish the uh, a part of the next chapter also. And one small segment will remain, uh, which talks about the glories of a son and the duties of a son towards the father. And with that, we move on to the Jabali uh, Rama discussion. So, uh, so he says, listen, in, in, in this world, many times duties are contradictory. So he's telling Rama, Bharata is telling Rama, listen, I, I think you're really getting into a very contradictory zone. Where is the far forest and what is, where is the duty of a Kshatriya? A Kshatriya at your age, who is a Grahastha, what are you doing in the forest sitting here wearing matted hair instead of maintaining the kingdom? Is this your dharma? What are you doing this for? Uh, you should perform. Uh, you should not be doing such contradictory activities. So he's basically saying that Vanaprastha or asceticism is not uh, meant for, for a Kshatriya and not at this age for sure. So he says, oh, greatly intelligent one, the first duty of yours is to be coronated of, as a king and take good care of your citizens. Yes, we saw earlier 
uh, the the definition of the citizens uh, that was given uh, or the definitions of humans as usual is because they are sukha uh, they, they are always seekers of sukha and as a king you are supposed to facilitate and enable that uh, as part of varnashrama then the next logic he is giving is okay now you are saying fine i want to live the life of an ascetic come live here in this space then I, I'm asking you one question. Have you known anybody who's actually done it this way at your age? 25 something? You're renouncing your kingdom, coming and living here in the, in the forest. Has anybody advised this? Is there external validation? So we always say, you know, in the, in the Gaudiya Vaishnava canons, we say Guru, Sadhu, Shastra, three. Yes, and these need to support. Okay, your guru or your father has said this, but is the Sadhu is saying this, is Shastra supporting this? You don't have any support there. So, um, he's saying with the son of a Kshatriya, why would he give up in, 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 in uh, the Dharma that is directly in front of him as a Kshatriya? You're the son of a Kshatriya and your Kshatriya Dharma doesn't want you to be sitting here with matted hair and carry out and you go and opt to carry out that is doubtful, that is undefined, that is slow, that is uncertain. Why would you pick this up? Dharma is meant to bring out uh, um, what is beneficial for this life and next life. That is the principle of Dharma. And that is available in front of you. The Dharma of an ascetic or a Vanaprasthi is a very doubtful Dharma. Where, what is going to happen to him? Will he attain what he has to attain? Are you actually at this age and stage for that? It is doubtful whether it will lead to its promised results. But if you do your Grahastha Dharma, uh, that, is, that is very certain. Vanaprastha is uncertain. So, you should carry out that. Next comes a very beautiful verse. Uh, he says, okay. Some people say, oh, bhakti is very easy. I don't, you know, bhakti and all is very easy. If you actually want to listen to solid Gita lectures, you should only listen to people of this particular Advaita uh, marga or this particular community uh, or this particular guru where you see intellectual analysis uh, yes it is true but if one is assuming that the path of bhakti is without the intellectual uh, analysis of scripture then one is wrong because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says Siddhan Tavaliye Na Chitta Kariho Alasa hey Practitioner, don't do the mistake of being lazy with regard to understanding the philosophy, understanding the concepts. Because if you don't, then you, you if you don't understand the concept properly, you'll suffer two types of problems. One is when, when a problem comes that's a little out of the usual, as, as in today's circumstance, all sorts of new things pop up. We don't know, is this right or wrong? Uh, is this to be done? Is this not to be done? These questions come up. So, these are difficult situations. Now, till the time you are a follower, <coughs> now it may be easy that you can go ask somebody. Yes, as a guru, as Arjuna approaches uh, Krishna, as we may have the opportunity to approach a guru or some a sadhu who knows well. But if that doesn't happen, if you know you, you're going to be the last of the old crop, uh -huh, then at that point, so at some point or the other, one will have to take. The responsibility of making decisions based based on the shastric truth that we ingrain within ourselves and as we ingrain that then we have the ability to discern uh, the right from the wrong and that's very very important so um if you know it is, it is very important to understand uh, uh, philosophy therefore we, sometimes we have to choose a path and some people prefer to choose the difficult path okay and i think i want to choose the difficult path I am such an intellectual person that I don't even understand that I'm not this body. Yeah, because all this intellectualism many times leads to, uh, you know, it, it can be intellectual wrangling, uh, but it may not lead to anything. Just as Shankaracharya concludes himself, Nahi Nahi Rakshati Dukrin Karade. Or just as the Lord says, Klesho Hyadikatarastesham. Abhyakta sakta chetasam Abhyakta higatir dukkam Dehavat hiravapyate 
klesho ohi adhikatara. It's a very painful process. So, hey Rama, okay, you're telling me just like when you go to karate, they teach you pain is game. Oh, so that concept, Rama, you're thinking pain is game. Then the true pain is not in the forest. This is the escape. This is honeymoon. The actual pain is there in the city. And therefore, if you see, we also talked about what is, why Bharata was termed Bharata is one because he felt the whole, the actual maintenance of a kingdom is true Bharat. There, therefore, the Bhara of Prithvi, the kings, the good kings alleviate Bhumi Bhara for Bhumata by taking that burden upon themselves. It's true. It's truly a big burden. So he's saying, oh, if you want the hard path, then the hard path is not coming to the forest and just wearing jata and uh, honeymooning with your wife. The actual hard path is being there in Ayodhya and establishing Varnashrama. That, that's the crux of this verse um, uh, that is coming. Atah kleshajam evatvam. Oh, if you really want that which is difficult to perform, dharmam charitumichasi, if you want to follow that dharma, a uh, difficult one, then dharmena chaturo varnan, then the four varnas, palayan klesham apnuhi, then take the difficulty of taking it because managing the four varnas is not a simple thing at all. Because you need to think uh, in their steps. Uh, you have to see each varna has its own requirements. You should be able to understand that and take care of all that. If you want to carry out dharma that is difficult. Accept the difficulty of maintaining the four varnas through dharma. Uh, so it's a, it's a very difficult thing to do. So the next one, the greatness of Grahastha Ashrama is coming. He says, the next point, Chaturnam Ashramam hi. Grahastyam Shreshtam Ashramam of the four ashramas, the Grahastha Ashrama uh, is the best. And then he says, Prahur Dharmagnya Dharmagnya Stam Katam Tektumar Hasi Prahuhu. So it has been told that Grahastha Ashrama is the best. So Dharmagnya, hey, you are the knower of Dharma. Uh, Dharmagnya, the great Dharmagnyas have told this. Uh, so then, Tam. Katam Tektumar Hasi. Then why do you decide to actually give this up and, and move in this direction? It is not correct. So there are some beautiful quotes that uh, Vidwan Gauranga Prabhu has nicely picked up from Bhakti Vinod Thakur talking about the uh, Grahastha Ashrama. So we'll just go through that segment a little uh, before we move on. So, Paribrajaka O Brahmachari Gane Kevala Grahastera Sahaye Pratipalita Hana Pratipalita. Who is taking care of the, the Brahmachari is there. If you see, the whole Varnashrama system, there is one man. You have the four Varnas and the four Ashramas. They sink in like this. So you have uh, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra and within that, the Brahmachari, the Grihastha, the Vanaprastha, and the sannyasi. So, a person from the shudra uh, who has shudra qualities is not considered good to be uh, sannyasi. So, if you knock out of the gra gradient matrix that comes out of the 15, 16, you knock out one. Uh, there's 15 to go. And out of that 15, all the brahmacharis uh, are not expected to earn, irrespective of which background they are from. Yes, all the grahasthas are expected to work, earn, maintain family. The Vanaprasthi is not expected to earn uh, uh, for his living and maintain himself. Um, the Sanyasi is not expected to maintain. It is this Grahastha who is actually maintaining the Brahmachari. It is this Grahastha who actually maintains the Vanaprasthi. It is the Grahastha who maintains the Sanyasi. That's the point that he's making here. Paripalitahana. All of these are actually maintained by. And within that also, of the Brahmana Varga, they are completely dependent on the other Grahasthas. Because they don't work for their this thing. Uh, they are dependent on the other Varnas. So, the, the Kshatriyas and the Vaishyas, these are the two communities and the heart of the whole economy, of the whole Varnashrama system, to maintain that is these two Grahasthas that are there. The Kshatriya Grahastha and the Vaishya Grahastha. These two are the people. The Shudra Grahasthas are the ones who are actually working and making things happen. So, if when these people are the heart of the community, 
Therefore, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is basically in Chaitanya Sikshamrata is quoting this particular point. But then he says, um, therefore the Grahastha Ashrama is best. But um, he describes what is the true nature of Grahastha Ashrama? What is the purpose of Grahastha? So he says, Siksha Samapta Haile. The actual fact is a person takes to the school uh, Grahastha Avastati. Jivere Atma Tattva Udaya mm, Karibara O Siksha Karibara Chatushpata Vishay Pati Vishesha So he comes there to gain Siksha. It's like he's entering Grahastha Ashrama, it's like he enters the school. When you are done with your education in the school, what are you still doing in the school? Move on. So he says, Siksha Samapte Hoyle Chatushpati Yaga so when he has actually learned how to live his life, when he has basically won over his senses, when he has come to a position where he has controlled his uh, indriyas, at that situation, he moves on uh, because his study is over, he leaves the school. Now, the symptoms, when do you know a person has actually uh, 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 done that education and he's, he's done for himself and he's in a position to move? When he is free from the hankering of association with women, when he is full of compassion for all living beings, the realization that earning money is insignificant and the endeavor to accumulate food and clothing only when they are unavailable, pure bhava bhakti towards Krishna, realization that association that is averse to Krishna is insignificant, pratikulya savarjanam. Yeah. Equal disposition towards personal honor. Uh, Tulya Ninda, Stutir Mauni, honor, dishonor, being absolutely free from the hankering to take up many ventures and to be free from Sarvaramba Parityagi is, is the kind to take up new ventures, ye karo, wo karo, and be free from attraction and repulsion towards living and dying, respectively. Yes, which Rama also speaks in the short Gita that one should be equipoised. Bharata is saying you are equipoised towards the living and the dead. Uh, you deal with both of them with equity. Um, so, Beautiful verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. The most advanced devotee sees everything uh, in the soul of all souls. Within everything, the soul of all souls, the Supreme Personality. Consequently, he sees everything in relationship to the Supreme. Yes. Shuni chaiva shwapa kecha pandita samadarshinaha. Thus, a sadhu engages in staunch devotional service uh, to the Lord without deviation. For the sake of the Lord, he renounces all other connections such as family. So when one comes to that stage of maturity, then one in a position to uh, give it up. One should aspire for that. One should work towards that. A Lakshana, uh, when, when, when these qualities, the great devotee who has developed these characters uh, is no longer capable. The problem is because he is so detached, he is so uh, advanced in what he is doing. Therefore, he is no longer attracted to these things. Therefore, he is not capable of becoming being a normal grahasta. Uh, he is gone beyond at, he's gone one level beyond being a normal grahasta and therefore this point is being ma uh, made that he becomes a renunciant at that stage. So Srimad Bhagavatam is trying to bring about internal realization of the nature of the soul. Uh, that's important. Ashravana maham turyaha. Turya uh, is the sannyasi or the, uh, the renunciant of all ashramas. Krishna tells to Uddhava that I am uh, Turya, I'm, I'm, I'm the fourth ashrama. And um, then he says, the married order of life uh, appeared from the loins of, of my universal form. The celibate uh, students came from my heart. And the forest dwellers uh, uh, retired, uh, appeared from my chest. And the renounced order of life are situated within the head of the universal form. In other words, being in Sanyas ashrama, being in the renounced order is the most suitable space to be from a spiritual point of view. That's a very, very important point. So then he says, he says, look at, look at what my situation is. I'm no good to actually be able to govern. You are the person who should be actually governing. I'm inferior to you, younger to you by birth, by learning or by position. How can I maintain a kingdom as big? So you have to come in specific dharma is to rule your dharma is to rule your parental kingdom yes it's a very old kingdom and it is without thorns to basically establish that here i am sitting with kaikeyi 
And both of us are telling you there are no thorns. There is no obstruction to what you are doing at this point in time. If at all there should be an obstruction that is me, should be me. But I am not at all interested in this kingdom. So then he says, I'm making you a final offer in my words. Uh, he concludes by stating this. He says, Rama, Iha ivatva abhishinchantu. Hey Rama, please get coordinated right here. Why did you think I bought all these people along? Why is the army here? Why are all the, the Purohits who are being bought here? Why are the mothers here? Why are the prominent citizens here? Why are the mantris here? So that you can get coordinated here. So my request is please. Vashishta, everybody is here. Uh, they are ready to do this. So get coordinated here right now. And apart from that, this is your duty. So go ahead, do your duty. Govern the kingdom and enjoy. Yes, your duty. You have debts. You have debts towards the Devatas. You have debts towards the Pitras. You have the debts towards the Rishis. And you are supposed to actually protect the kingdom. So anybody who is actually antagonistic to you or to you, they have burned them up. Enjoy the kingdom and be happy. Help. Um, and then he says another point. He said, help your father and mother. Uh, don't you want to help them? Uh, how is this? This is the new logic that he is giving. He says, Akrosham mama matuscha. Akrosham. My, my mother in her last she became the repository of the anger of my father. Uh, the Sharata became so angry with her, he cursed her. So please alleviate her from that situation, save her from that, and then protect your father from accruing sins. Because Chapitaram, Raksha Kilbisha, uh, Kilbisham, uh, this word comes again and again in the Gita and Tekta uh, um, Kilbishaha. Yes, it comes multiple times. Kilbisha is basically sin. Save your father from doing the sin as he has actually initiated by correcting his wrong. Yes, and then he says, I bow my head. Chirasa Twabi Twabi Acheham Kurushwa Kurunam Mai Kurushwa Karunam Mai Chirasa Twabi Ache Twa Abi Ache. I am begging with my head on your feet. Yes, show me karuna. How should you show me karuna? Bhandaveshu mm. chasarveshu. Because it's not only me, the, 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 the relatives and everybody is also here. But then, how to the to Bhandava, to people who are related to him and to the normal mortals, to the whole world, Bhuteshu, all living entities, Eva Maheshwaraha, just as Maheshwara shows a kindness or karuna towards all living creatures, you also show karuna towards me. Now, who is this Maheshwara? Lord Shiva here. Hmm. So, Govindaraja in his, in his explanation tells us who Maheshwara is. So, Yad Vedadav Sarvaha Prokto Vedante Cha Pratishtitaha Tasya Prakriti Linasya Tasya Yaparaha Samaheshwaraha. What is the definition of Maheshwara? Maheshwara is one who transcends the syllable Om, uh, which is uttered at the beginning of the Vedas. Uh, Vedadav. In the beginning of Veda, Sarvaha Prokto, where everywhere it is stated. Vedante cha pratishtitaha. Veda is cha sarvai rahameva vetyo. Vedanta krit veda vetyeva chaham. So, he is the pratishtata of the Vedas. And is well established uh, um, uh, in the Upanishads. Here it says Vedant Techa Pratishtitaha means it is well established in the Vedas, the, what has been said before, and which is dissolved in Prakriti during meditation. So, this is from Narayana Upanishad. And this verse hmm, basically defines that Purushottama, the object of meditation, the previous verse it seems basically talks about how the Lord. That is to be meditated, process of meditating on the Supreme Lord as the ether in the heart. And the next verse talks about meditating on him as Purushottama. And then this verse comes in after that. So, though Lord Shiva is many times referred to as Maheshwara, Ishwara, Mahaishwara, or Sarveshwara, all of these ultimately to say the ultimate Ishwara, that is Sri Krishna himself. So, uh, 
ultimately he is referring to him here as Vishnu. He is telling, oh Rama, just as Vishnu, you are the same person. Just as Vishnu forgives everybody, you also show Kripa to me. Uh, be, be kind. So, and the Bhagavatam anyway, Nimnagaram yata ganga deva nam chuto yata Vaishnava nam yata shambhu Vaishnava. Of all the Vaishnava, shambhu is the greatest that uh, reference also comes. Finally, Bharata declares. And he says, this is the request of mine. If you don't regard, I'm giving you an ultimatum. What's he saying? Atayetat prashtataha Kritva, if this request you are going to put aside, put behind you, Varameva Bhavan Itaha, if it is the forest, uh, uh, if, if you disregard and you only go to the forest, if that's what you're going to say, then Gamishyati Gamishyami Bhavata Sardham Apyaham, then Gamishyati Gamishya, where you go, I will go with you. I will be there right behind you just as Lakshmana, I will become your shadow and I will be with you. So, this is what he is saying. Now, with that, Bharata stops. Now, the camera focuses towards Rama. What is Rama's situation? Valmiki is narrating. Nachaiva Chakra Gamanaya Satvanam the person who is filled with all good qualities, Sattvanam, yes, all those good qualities. Na chaiva chakre gamishya gamaya gamanaya. There was no desire for Rama. Rama had no interest in going. Matim pitu tadvachane vyavastitaha because his mati. Pituhu tadvachane. Fathers, those words, vyavastitaha. Is completely situated in those words, the instructions that his father had been given, and had no interest at all in going back. Looking at that, uh, look how many varieties, how many chapters Bharata is trying again and again, different logics, different ways. First, he gave a whole lot of logic, then he said, Kingdom, if it is my kingdom, then I'm giving you as dana, accept it. Um, so many different logic. Finally, he's saying, saying you're not doing your dharma. My mother was the problem. Your father has done wrong, right, wrong. So many th different logic. Still, Rama is impossible to move from his conviction. So looking at that, the people became sad and happy. Um, how? Tadadbutam stairyam avekshyaragave When they saw adbutam stairyam that voice, uh, that dhradata, uh, uh, steadiness that Rama was um, uh, showing at that point in time. They were awestruck when they saw that. So what happened? Samam Samam Jano Hrisham Avapya Dukkitaha Hrisham Avapya Dukkitaha They also became happy. Hrisha, Hrishta to be happy and Dukkitaha they be you know, uh, uh, sad at the same time. Then that he was not going to Ayodhya was the reason for the sadness and the fact that he is showing steadiness in his vows is the reason for happiness. Nayati Ayodhya Amiti Dukkito Abhavat The fact that he is Nayati, he is not coming to Ayodhya, therefore they were in Dukkha. Stira Pratignyatvam Aveksha Harshitaha Because of Stira Pratignya, he is not ready to move. Therefore, they were very, very happy to see that. Now, what a beautiful example to set. Uh, with a small setback, we can take a complete U-turn in our lives. But Rama is so fixed with regard to what he wants to do. Nothing can shake him off. The mothers are crying. The whole nation is crying. The army is beseeching him. Uh, the, the, the gate panditas and the uh, ministers and the guru janas are all requesting him. He is not ready to budge an inch. Yes, sometimes it looks like he's so heartless. He's been so, you know, they're all requesting him still he is not moving one inch yes <laughs> next what happened the officiating priests the leading citizens and the mothers when they saw all this situation one is the resolve of rama there is appreciation there is happiness from the greatness of rama seeing the greatness of rama seeing the great words the greatness of bharata the great words that bharata is speaking 
had a great attitude uh, they were very very impressed by all of that they all appreciated all that but still the result was that they will not be able to have rama with them going back into ayodhya so in that pain they were all crying and the mothers and others fainted um, uh, uh, with tears in their eyes mm. and everybody looking at the greatness of rama offered obeisances to rama in that situation hari krishna with that we finish um, chapter 106 so the editing theme always the name of the chapters uh, number of the chapters also i'll give uh, right at the beginning of the chapter you'll be able to put that in place now let us look at chapter uh, 107 do we have any questions comments questions comments anybody no question no prabhu all good all good prabhu hare krishna now the next uh, chapter is a interesting twist actually rama becomes grave and then rama explains why his resolve is so strong why he is so very fixed about you know what is to happen and how it is to happen that very very clear coming out there so uh rama is saying jatah putro dasharata kaikeyam raja sammatat he says listen bharata what am i you saying is fantastic specifically it is well in accordance with the kind of birth that you have taken jatah putro the son to who dasharatah and kaikeyam and raja sattama ah uh, uh, sattama you are an emperor and all of this is perfectly in in decorum to what but he is having this word putra here for a specific purpose uh he is trying to argue here uh that you see you you made this argument and this discussion just one sec you made this argument and this whole discussion to say that i shouldn't be in manaprastha life etc you you given so many different logics but let me explain to you what is going to happen uh, what, what is the reason for which i am i am so firm uh, about being there is a note but i have to come back to that note so he says pura bratah pitanah samataram te samudvaham samudvaham is when he got married pura bratah in the old times my my dear brother pitanah our father ah uh, samataram when he got married to uh, our, uh, your mother what happened mata mahi माता महे समाश्रुषी गेव अ प्रॉमिस टू माता महे टू माई योर मदर्स फादर योर ग्रैंड फादर द किंग ऑफ के के वॉज मेड अ प्रॉमिस वॉट वॉज द प्रॉमिस राज्य शुल्क अनुत्तम लुक एट दैट उल्टा डोरी दैट दशरथ एक्चुअली सेट दैट आई विल गिव यू राज्य शुल्कम that i will give her the kingdom anuttama yes not you know half not uh, half cooked but i'll give a very special kingdom to her means she is not going to become queen yes so whom are whom are you giving this kingdom to so the answer is the kingdom is being given to uh, her son so that's a commitment he had made at the time of um, uh, when he got married now so till now nobody discussed this so it seems later govind raja mentions this that uh, sumantra had mentioned this to rama and that's how rama uh, picks this up uh, as an aspect so when this marriage happened he had made a commitment uh, you've been criticizing your father but here is an unassailable argument that is being presented to actually uh, show the greatness of dasharatha this actually shows the greatness of it is it in on one sense a little difficult to understand but also shows the greatness of dasharatha so he says then apart from that first a promise had been made that is promise 
सेकंड प्रॉमिस दैवासुरे च संग्रामे जनन्ये तब पार्थिवा दैवासुरा संग्राम व्हेन द युद्ध वाज हैपनिंग बिटवीन द देवस एंड द असुरस दैट टाइम योर मदर आर टू द ग्रेट किंग व्हाट डिड शी डू संप्रहिष्टो द दौराजा संप्रहिष्टो विद कंप्लीट हैप्पीनेस ही के व्हाई वाज ही सो हैप्पी वरम आराधिता प्रभु बिकॉज़ शी हैड डन अ ग्रेट ग्रेट थिंग फॉर हिम शी हैड ऑनर्ड हिम ग्रेटली बाय नर्सिंग हिम इन दैट सिचुएशन बीइंग हिज चैरिटियर एंड ड्राइविंग हिम आउट ऑफ दैट सिचुएशन वेयर ही कुड हैव लॉस्ट हिज लाइफ um then he says aya chat mm vara vardini aya chat means asked in that situation based on these two vara vardini this vara uh, vardini uh, means varna is color a uh, vara vardini is one who is got a beautiful complexion golden complexion kai kai akshi uh, asked for this book so here even here rama is praising rama is basically defending for kai kai and he is saying therefore as she asked now the vara varnini also has another meaning uh, vara varnini is the vara is the boon boon varni varnana means also to describe varan varna ek hai varnana is also to describe so vara varnini is she very clearly asked in black and white uh, you can say that is another use of the word varna she she did description varnini and varna in black and white in very clear colors very clear terms what she wanted what she didn't want how she wanted it so what she did there was nothing wrong about what she did the king became obliged to her and gave her two boons your exile i'm sorry my exile uh, and your ruling the kingdom so then the question will come why did kaikeyi uh have to ask for the kingdom again because it has already been given to her at that point in time so that's where the background comes that she got married when she was very young and this happened long 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 ago they didn't have sons for many 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 years and in that situation she herself also uh, sort of forgot about that so if you see when mantra comes to her mantra tells her do you remember and she reminds her of pura the old story which happened so long ago and so first was the first boon uh, that was given and then she reminds her of the second boon second boon which came in between so uh kaike didn't want to go back referring to the first old one she said i have a means here that's available to me to install the same thing so she is reusing these boons only to put that clearly in place that's what she is doing uh why uh so then the question is why did dasharatha give the kingdom to rama if that was the case if it had been promised to her why did he give so this is a very very beautiful logic that's been given here it's an important point in the attempt उद्वाह काले रति संप्रयोगे प्राणात्यये सर्वदनापहारे आ उद्वाह काले मीन्स एट द टाइम ऑफ मैरिज सो दे से दैट इन ऑर्डर टू पुट अ मैरिज यू कैन से अ फ्यू लाइफ इफ नेसेसरी सो एट अ पॉइंट लाइक दिस यू मे स्पीक समथिंग आ दैट यू मे नॉट कंप्लीटली बी विलिंग टू पुट इन प्लेस this is one such example so it said here that he is using that scriptural statement and prati samprayoge when 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 you want to maintain a conjugal relationship uh, you, uh, uh, there is something small that's happened but uh, you feel you, you, you know your wife may be very hurt by that somebody said something this that then you say oh no he didn't say anything no that's not a problem these are small things that you can adjust here and there for a bigger good so that you maintain that uh, bigger relationship Mm, pranatya ye when your life is in danger that time you can say anything oh no i never did this oh that's the guy go get him you you can do when your life is in danger you can do various things and sarvadana apahare if somebody is not just part of your dana sarvadana apahare is everything is going to be taken away then you can you know adjust the truth a little mm, viprasya charte for the sake of protecting for the sake of a brahmana you can use api artham padeyuhu api anrutam padeyuhu at that point in time anrutam you can speak untruth pancha anrut anrutani ahur 
apatakari it's not patakani it's not it's not a very big sin or a problem this is called apatakani these are not big sins so uh, here it is being explained by govind raja that he is taking shelter of that particular situation uh, probably it when 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 he met her at that point in time so you see the kind of conundrum that bharata is, uh, is dasharatha is going through uh, he was already a married man he had uh, kaushalya as his wife and sumitra also at that point in time but then he bumps into kaikeyi uh, possibly in a mall and uh, sorry in a in a hall uh, at a swayamvara and uh, when that happens um, um, he sees Uh, that this condition is coming up this is the same situation that shantanu was faced with when it come to bishma yes shantanu uh, the 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 father of the fisherman fisher woman sorry uh, uh, he didn't want to give his daughter to shantanu unless he promises that shantanu's uh, uh, sorry that uh, satyavati's uh, child will become the king so satyavati though from a fishing a uh, background because the father had insisted shantanu didn't want to go ahead with the marriage and that that but he was locked down at that point in time so bishma comes to know of this particular thing and bishma takes a vow that i will never marry if if you are bishma goes to the fisherman and he says that the kingdom is yours don't worry i will never i will never ask for the kingdom so then the fisherman says oh you may not ask but when your next generation come they will make demands of you at that time you may succumb to those demands or after you they may take over the kingdom so what will happen So he said, "Then I will not get married at all." That is why the great brother that he took. So in a similar situation, the Sharda was in a situation he didn't want to let go of what his uh, uh, of the actual privacy that Kaushalya had. But still, uh, uh, he in that situation uh, he was he was enamored. So in that situation he did give a word at that point in time. So the king of then it also is explained that. uh uh you know what dasharatha said though he really didn't mean it uh is not considered a very big problem per se so the king kaikeya being attracted to rama's auspicious qualities even though after that everybody when they saw rama when they saw these children being born rama was the first born and therefore gets the natural right and all of that and the king of kaikeya or kaikeyi looking at her affection for rama looking at everybody's affection the nation's affection the beauty of rama the qualities of rama it seems even the king of kaikeya didn't want to come back and ask for this thing he was happy uh, to allow rama to be uh, the king but then rama had heard this from sumantra therefore rama had no qualms about this uh, it should be understood that they had known it yet they let things go by naturally so very few people knew it uh, what was happening in the background so we need to understand from dasharatha's role sometimes in in the in a in the relationship of a husband and wife there would be something is in the background it's an unstated truth it is there in the background you don't want to even state it uh, one person may be taking advantage of that situation the other may completely deny that oh it never happened who said what is the proof you can do all these things uh, but a true satyavadi a true gentleman will have that in his heart he will not be able to budge from that when 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 he is questioned when he is asked for that he can't say no that's the kind of situation that dasharatha was even though it's a very old promise was given in a situation just before the marriage he can take resort to so many things he can come up with a new legislation and say this is what it is and i don't care what you think or whoever whatever is said but this is how i want it all the people want rama people have all voted for rama how can i make a change he can have he could have said so many things but he bound himself by the fact that yes there was that point that had been mentioned i cannot overrule it completely and that is supported now by additional two boons that she has asked for how can i get out of this and therefore dasharatha basically conceded uh, to that so then he says so hum manamidam prapto therefore i have come to the forest nirjaram lakshmanam anvitaha i have come to the nirjana un- uninhibited forest of lakshmana sitaya cha mm, apratidvanda dvandvah satye vade sita pituhu apratidvanda uh, that, that there is nobody who can who can oppose 
uh, this particular aspect. Nobody can prevent me from doing what? Satyavade Titaf Pitohu. To, to see to it that my father's words, whether the first spoon given to uh, Kekaya or the second given to Kekaya's daughter. Either ways, I'm not going to let that go. Yeah, this was uh, Rama's final. So you, you can also say, Aprati uh, The reality is when Rama was the first, there, there's nobody who can actually uh, take Takkar with Rama, nobody to match. So you, you can't beat him at that. But here he's also telling Bharata, please understand how I've explained the actual Satya to you. And this Satya is so strong, you cannot even object to it. Yes? Cha uh, Aprati Satyavade. Yes, this, this Satya, even you can't object to this particular. In a similar manner, you should also quickly uh, make the emperor, our father, true to his words. So he says, go ahead. You also follow uh, what has to be done and act true to the emperor's words. I am in the forest. You are in Ayodhya. Hmm? Thank you very much. This is a bit of a Difficult to digest for some people, this particular thing when it pops up. And the beauty is, who's saying it? It's not Bharata who is saying it. It's not Kaikeyi who is saying it. It's Rama who is saying it. Rama has the greatest desert. This is a truth to Rama's disadvantage. In the normal perspective, parlance of the world, it's to Rama's disadvantage. By stating this truth and giving it is any credence, Rama is actually reducing the chance that he may ever get his kingdom. But Rama... He's telling Bharata a truth that he didn't know. He's telling him that this is what had happened. So it shows the greatness of Rama here. It also shows the greatness of Dasharatha. Why the man was so troubled at that point in time. He had love for his son. He knew uh, Rama is the one that should be ruling. But still he was being bound by not only the two boons, but a prior boon was also there in his background. That's why many times within Grahastas also you'll see uh, that a man or a woman may not be able to put their feet down even when something is going wrong or uh, in the family. That's because there is something in the background uh, because of which uh, the person is not able to assert uh, his will there. And he's able to see those and either he's being a gentleman or he's being a victim. Uh, either ways. But sometimes we may have to make many of those adjustments. That's the kind of grahastha adjustment yeah, that Dasharatha seems to have done. Hare Krishna. Any other comments, questions before we wrap for the day? The next segment is a bit uh, of a different shade. As I mentioned, this talks about the duties of a son towards the father. And uh, Rama is basically going ahead and, and stating this. Maybe we'll, we'll try to quick cover this also. Any questions as of uh, the current state? Comments? Okay. So, here, Rama is telling Bharata, listen, till now you've been talking about Rina Mochana, Mochaya Rajanam. That, you know, you've been telling me that I have to make the king sin free. But let me tell you, you have to make him free of the debt. And he, he has given a word. And you make it happen. Don't disturb that. Uh, there are many things you didn't know that I'm telling you now. And so he says, you know, basis all the background. This is the right thing to do. So you please go ahead. Uh, make your father happy. Make your mother happy. Go and rule the kingdom. Then he says, uh, it seems there's a great uh, statement that is made. Gayeshu uh, Eva Pitaran Prati. Uh, illustrious Gaya made this statement uh, when he was engaged, while engaging in a sacrifice for his forefathers at Gaya. So when, when he was doing, uh, because of that, the place also got named Gaya. So Gaya made this mention. He said, the son is called a putra because he protects his father from the hell. Put. Yes. Punnamo naraka dhyasmat pitaram. Trayate Sutaha. Who is the son? Punnama Naraka Yasmat Pitaram Trayate Sutaha. This is a very famous off quote uh, verse and definitely worth learning um, from a long term uh, Pravachan kind of perspective. 
because one who saves the father from uh, the naraka called put yes or punnama because it's uh, sandhi uh, the put naraka uh, because he saves from him therefore the person is called uh, he's called a son tasma putra that suta which is son therefore he is put uhu trayate iti putra manaha trayate iti mantra so putra name putra iti prokta pitran yat pativa suta one who actually is able to take the parents uh, his his father out of that situation that is the son now are you fulfilling that yes you want your father to get a bad results because of the words that he has been given and you are not fulfilling them you don't enable that that to be fulfilled he is not here it is our duty to fulfill a son protects his father uh, and then he is sent to uh, by doing putra and ishti and all of these rites uh, he he sees to it that they they attain higher planets um, then he makes uh, one should hanker actually he says in the, in the vedic system that's why people would hanker for many sons he says bhavataha putra putra gunavanto bahut shrutaha um, a son um, who has good qualities who is learned um, um, and out of that one might go to gaya and perform the rites for his father and therefore people would have uh, many sons because these sons are their actual insurance uh, uh, in in the beyond life beyond this life so then he says oh beloved son of the king all the saintly kings have concluded in this manner it therefore please save your father it is your responsibility so you actually become his putra save him from falling into put naraka um, and it is rama's advice to bharata and then he says oh hero is bharata go with shatrugna yes and please the subjects and please yourself be happy shatrugna sahita viro saha sarvair dvijati bihi hmm? prakritir anuragnya hmm. prakritir anuranjya anuranjya is basically to keep them happy hmm? to please them if you if you remember i was also mentioning that people generally are uh, seekers of of sukha of peace happiness so please keep them happy do that go with shatrugna and take care there with no further delay i will enter dandakaranya with these two and he names who are the two because dash varata earlier told him i will also come along with you if you are going into the forest so he is saying mm, praveksha dandakaranyam aham api mm, ab avilambayam abayam tu sahito rajan vai dehya lakshmane na cha yes and therefore please no further delay i am going into the forest with these two no more discussion bharata become the king of men and i will become please uh, the task master of animals in the forest so that excellent city is now full of happiness will enter Uh, uh, and I will enter Dwarka. The Ayodhya will be happy, and I will enter uh, 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 Ayodhya, Tandaka, not Dwarka. Sorry. So your umbrella obstructing the sun's rays should produce cool shade on your head, but trees are shading me. Yes. So you have umbrella, and I have trees. Don't worry. We are in our place. That is our right place for each of us. Shatrugna, who is so intelligent, is a fantastic ass assistant for you. Ah, Kushala Mati hi tu, Shatrugna ha. Ah, with Sahaya ha, with the help of him, you can manage the kingdom very easily. Sumitra's son ah uh, is well known uh, a chief friend as a chief friend of mine, even for our our younger days. We four sons will make the king fixed in truth and not in dejection. So he is saying, Paravayam hmm, Narendram. Satyas, mm, Satyas tam, Bharata, mm, Chamara, Ma Vishadam, Ma Vishadam. Don't give him dejection. Yes, the Ma Vishada is is also uh, is right in the beginning of Valmiki uh, uh, is is coming, 
and in the Bhagavad Gita also we, we, we see this term being used again and again. So with this chapter, he is, Rama is concluding to say that in, in the prior chapter end itself, we saw that Rama was completely unmoved. People were totally uh, surprised by the steadiness and the fixedness of Rama. But here Rama comes and gives the final feather or the final straw in the camel's back uh, with one of the really strong logic out there uh, for uh, Bharata. Despite that, you know, Bharata is, is now losing hope, but there is one final volley that Bharata fires later. This is Jabali volley, and uh, we'll close with this for today. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Any questions, comments before I conclude? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. It is a wonderful session, Prabhuji. Actually, you know, we knew that, you know, we know the general story how Bharata goes and you know, he, he takes his uh, father, I mean, his uh, I think for and carries and he rules. But this detail is amazing, actually, <laughs> the way this uh, conversation goes, you know. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. The beauty of Valmiki Raman and how this comes, you look at it. Actually, you look at the way Bharata is also approaching his arguments and logic one after another. It's such a long discussion debate that's happening between them. Similarly, Rama is also keeping one Brahmastra for the final for the final throw. It's so interesting. Rama spoke so many things. Again and again, he tried various things to refute uh, Bharata. But finally, he fires his Brahmastra and says, I am very, very clear why this should happen this way. And it's so beautiful to see that. I was also, you know, when I saw this come up in this section, it was very interesting when I read it earlier. Thank you very much. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yes, Mataji. Uh, Prabhu, why did uh, Rama and uh, Sita and Lakshmana have to go to the Andakaranya? Why were they not staying back in Chitrakut? Mm, nice question. The answer will come in the future chapters. <laughs> but, okay. but what happens is, uh, if you see in the description, we see one particular aspect come up very interestingly. The aspect is, they are describing how Rama's hermitage is in one space, and very nearby there is another Rishi there. And this place, the others are able to see that these rishis are going to Mandakini to take their bath in the morning. So, you know, the description of that whole place, Chitrakuta, is fantastic. So, Chitrakuta is supposed to be a peaceful hub for all the rishis and all these people that are there. The reason why Rama cited that he cannot stay with uh, a Guha is he said, this is too proximate or my people will keep visiting this place. It's a problem. Oh, the people landed up with a full army here and the whole Dandaka. You know, can you imagine what would have happened to that peaceful Mandakini with, with a full army sitting there? All these rishis and munis, they came. They left the city to come and live peacefully in the forest. Now all these fellow city wallas came and made the forest into a city. What's going to happen? This was Rama's concern. So Rama thought, I am actually disturbing all these sadhus. So out of concern for those sadhus, Rama decides to move into Dandaka, which is Nirjanavana. And it, it also means he's, he's moving into a next segment, which is deep forest. Uh, it, it seems even now, people don't get into Dandaka. Even today, when we have already killed the forest, they, we have killed all the wild animals, when we have felled most of the trees, even today, nobody enters, the, enters Dandaka. So in those days, you know, how would Dandaka Aranya have been? So we should imagine. So Rama is doing, this is another sacrifice he is doing for the sake of the peace of the sages that are there for the sake of the Ayodhya Vasis so that they will know clearly that declaration has been made that I am not going to be here. Don't send the next flight of people into this space. So that's how he addresses the two concerns. I hope that answers the query. Yes, Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Anybody else? Jai. Then we'll, we'll close for the day. Can I request everybody, please switch on their mics. If there's some enabling needed, please do that. Everybody together. Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman Ki Jai. 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 Let's all chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra in prayers for all those who are unwell uh, financially, mentally, uh, COVID in, in whichever way. Let's pray for all of them. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare.
Thank you very much, uh, Jayant and team for organizing, Gauri Mataji, Hardik and Kartikeyan. Uh, okay, Mamta Mataji, Nandarani, thank everybody for being here. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you so much. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you Prabhuji, Hare Krishna.